Hello everyone and welcome. I was just watching this video from Jay's Two Cents about kind of his frustrations with ASUS and how he doesn't want to work with them as a partner anymore. And some of the issues he's had with their hardware, such as two motherboards in a row with damaged sockets direct from ASUS. And kind of his comments on the Gamers Nexus video about how ASUS had broken overclock or sorry overcurrent protection on their motherboards and you know not only had the same issue as like gigabyte and msi where they were overvolting the soc and the amd ryzen 7800 x 3d and causing it to destroy itself but also the motherboards were destroying themselves specifically asus motherboards were destroying themselves and how their customer service was failing at being good. I'm not going to cover everything that was in these videos. They're kind of lengthy. Gamers Nexus video is half an hour and Jay's video is 17 minutes, but I will leave links to them in the description if you want to watch those. Now, I've been an Asus customer for 20 years. I've owned four Asus motherboards, built my first computer with an Asus motherboard, I've owned three Asus phones, three Asus sound cards. My current system has two Asus monitors, an Asus motherboard, an Asus video card, and uh, Asus Blu-ray drive. I have another system in another room with an Asus video card and motherboard in it. I've got an Asus GTX 1080 Ti in the closet in the other room. And I think I've got two or more Asus laptops in the closet in the other room. So I've got a reasonable amount of experience with Asus. I will say that Jay here, he has a lot more experience with Asus hardware. As you can see, he's got a mountain of it sitting around him on this table. Probably more motherboards sitting there than I've ever worked with from Asus before. Well, it, maybe not my days back at Fry's. I, I worked with quite a few back then too, but over the years, he's definitely had more experience with motherboards and video cards than me. But I may have had more broad experience in the fact that I've also used their phones and Blu-ray drive. And my general impression of Asus is lately their hardware does seem to be going downhill. Even my X570 board, just it's missing features that the previous generation had. And while the quality of the hardware seems okay, I'm definitely not impressed with their software these days. Of course, I never was. Their software has always been bad. Um, GPU Tweak, whether it be GPU Tweak 2 or 3, terrible software. Uh, and I say terrible not in terms of functionality, design, layout, etc., but in terms of the fact that it can cause system instability and crashing, which will immediately rectify itself upon uninstalling their garbage GPU tweak software. Their phones. I have, in addition to a couple of older Zen phones, I have an Asus ROG Phone 3. When they released this thing, it didn't support voice over LTE on T-Mobile or AT&T. But when the announcements came in, was it? Late 2020, I think, or late 2019. Yeah, I think it was late 2019. That could be, actually, I think it was 2020. Anyway, when the announcements came that uh, AT&T and T-Mobile were both going to restrict voice to only voice over LTE, so you could not make calls on phones that didn't support it anymore, Asus did silently add Voice over LTE on AT&T and T-Mobile or the ROG Phone 3. This was officially, you know, a news story published September 23rd, 2020. So it wasn't late 2020. For some reason, they start out with this talking about a feature called bypass charging that was, to my knowledge, never in the phone, at least from the moment I bought it. It did not have it. I bought the phone several months after this update came out, though. But they do mention right after that that they 
do appear to have added VOLTE support. And I, I own this phone, I can tell you, they did. They also added voice over Wi-Fi support for T-Mobile. Well, when I bought the phone in January of 2021, both VOLTE and voice over Wi-Fi were working on T-Mobile. I think the phone came with Android 10 and they updated to Android 11 sometime in 2021. Near the end of 2021, I realized voice over Wi-Fi was gone. Like they, they had removed the feature, possibly with the Android 11 update. And then sometime in 2022, I think, I think it may have been July, they published an Android 12 update for the phone that removed VO LTE support. So you literally could not make calls on the phone on T-Mobile or AT&T in the United States anymore. So for people who actually use their cell phone as a cell phone, the thing was a brick. And what did Asus customer service say? Well, they told people to buy a new phone. In fact, I think customer support told somebody, I couldn't find the message, the post in here. This is the, the Zen talk forums. I couldn't find the post where someone talked about it, but I think someone did say that customer support told them to buy the ROG Phone 5. And here's a response from someone who supposedly works for the service department for uh, ASUS office of the CEO. And they say hello, their name, blah, blah, blah. And they say, I understand that you can no longer take calls after Android 12 updated. However, this is not due to a switch that you can turn on. This is due to your carrier no longer providing service for 3G devices. I can send you a link to our eShop and recommend a few alternative devices if you would like. So once again, the response from Asus was just, buy a new phone. Your old phone doesn't work anymore? Well, buy a new phone. doesn't matter that it was our update that broke it. Just buy a new phone. Right? And Asus, when it comes to updates, it's not the first time they've broken things. I had a Zenfone 3 Deluxe, pre-ordered, received it when it was brand new, just released. And they updated Android a couple of times on that. And with the first Android update, I think it was Android 7, they broke the alarms. They wouldn't go off reliably anymore. Some days they'd just never go off. Some days they'd go off late. Some days they'd go off once, but if you snoozed it or whatever, they wouldn't go off again. It made the alarms incredibly unreliable. So if you were someone who relied on your phone for waking you up, you couldn't rely on that phone anymore. And if you contacted their technical support about it, they were clueless. They had no idea it was even a problem. But anyway, back to... Back to this issue right here, um, I did want to mention, I'm not certain that Steve and Jay are correct about one thing. Steve from Gamers Nexus assumed that the following statement here in this, this paragraph of text, which is a disclaimer in the, the beta BIOS update, where you can download it on their website. It says, Asus does not give any warranties, whether express or limited as to the suitability, compatibility, or usability of the UEFI, its firmware, or any of its content, except as provided in the product warranty, and to the maximum extent permitted by law, ASUS is not responsible for direct, special, incidental, or consequential damages resulting from using this beta BIOS. So, Steve, and, and Jay appears to have agreed with them, Steve thinks that this means that if you use this beta BIOS, your, your warranty is void. But that's not really what this is saying. Now, I can see how you could, you could definitely say that if the board failed while this BIOS was installed, that your warranty would effectively be void because ASUS is saying they're not warranting beta BIOS. And since Steve says that this BIOS does not fix the issues that are destroying CPUs. You probably don't want to use this BIOS and just 
either restrict the SOC voltage manually, turn off EXPO, EXPO, the AMD alternative to XMP, or I don't know, to take the CPU out and stick another one in its place that's not going to have, you know, it's not going to be overvolted like the 7800X3D is. If you have a spare CPU to do that with, of course. You know, most of us aren't made of cash. We can't just go out and buy spare CPUs. But I, I don't think they're saying that the warranty is completely void and completely null because they are saying, except as provided in the product warranty. So I think the warranty is still in effect. It's just they're not going to warranty against any damage caused by this BIOS. And since this BIOS doesn't fix the issue, obviously, you probably don't want to use it until. I don't know, they, they updated a Giza. So maybe wait until there's another Giza update. I don't know. I don't know exactly what to do. So Steve may have some guidance in here somewhere. Um, trust Asus to screw customers. Intentional manipulation. Rooting trust. Honestly, I kind of feel that way myself. I, I feel that Asus is not trustworthy anymore, that their hardware quality was the only thing that really was good about them. Their software sucks, and it has always sucked. Did you know that their sound drivers include a software that opens hooks to every application on the system, injects code into every application on the system, and can cause general system instability and application crashes and errors? Seriously. Let's just pull open Windows services here real quick. It's this thing right here. This thing comes with ASUS sound drivers. It's not made by them. It's made by a third-party company, which is why it does not have their name on it. But this thing isn't running. So if I were to try to launch ASUS's sound drivers, and I didn't, or sound software, or uh, Sonic Studio, I think it is, it won't launch right now. I didn't like queue it up to make it easy to launch. I probably should have. Uh, let's see. I cannot give away too much information about myself while doing this. Sonic Studio 3, I think. Yep. The current system is not supported or the audio driver has not been properly installed. So if we just... I don't even need to do that. I can just start the service. It's on manual. So now let's try it. Apps. Sonic Studio 3. Windows apps, wonderfully slow. It works fine now. That, that service comes bundled with Sonic Studio 3 from Asus, which is not great software to begin with. This stupid thing opens hooks to everything on the system. It does have a blacklist. It comes with the software to prevent it from hooking things that it's known to cause problems with. But personally, I feel that blacklist is nowhere near big enough, and Asus uses a really old version of this software for some reason. So software quality on the ASUS side is really, really bad. So personally, myself, if I actually had the money to buy hard, right, I don't. But if I had the money, I would, I, th I think it's time to switch from ASUS to something else. I don't really want to support them anymore. Not until they get their act together. And I mean, their software has always been bad. So you pretty much always have to find alternatives to it. like. MSI Afterburner. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm recording in 1440p, so if you're watching in 1080p, you might not be able to. MSI Afterburner is actually really good software, but it's not made by MSI. They contracted a third party to do that. Reva Tuner, right? Which also makes this Reva Tuner statistics server. Anyway, I don't remember if I said it, but I'll, I'll put links to these videos down in the the video description. That way you guys can watch them if you want. I'll try to remember to put this on uh well I'll put a link to my my new blog in the this will be on there too. But uh 
I don't imagine many people watch this on YouTube. I have very few views on YouTube. Um, I think I've said everything I wanted to say. Asus just isn't what they used to be. So thanks for watching, everyone, and have a nice day.